Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and the Legends, and this weekend, Dominaria had its debut in the World of Standard. We got to see some of these cards actually in action at the Star City Games Atlanta Open as well as the Standard Classic this weekend. We're going to deep dive into the results and see which Dominaria cards made the cut and were in the more competitive decks this weekend. Quickly before we get started though, just a really fast reminder, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support us, one of which is our Patreon page. You're also going to find links to Amazon products below if you make any purchases on Amazon, no matter what it is, we'll get a small percentage. And finally, Flipside Gaming, still offering a promo code for our viewers. If you make any purchases there with that code, we'll get a small percentage from that as well. And as always, thank you not only to the folks who check out those links, but to all the viewers. And let's get into it. We have a lot to talk about. We'll start off with Star City Games Open Atlanta. Now, this was a team event, which means you have three people on each team, one person running a standard deck, one running a modern deck, one running a legacy deck. So with that being said, you do want to keep in mind that the standard decks that we're about to look at, I mean, some of them could have been pushed a little bit from good results from the other decks. However, we are seeing some changes here. You are going to notice that the decks in this particular tournament were maybe a little more conservative when it comes to adding new cards. Which makes sense because you are trying to make sure you don't do anything too risky because your team is relying on you. The decks in the Classic Tournament took some bigger risks. We'll look at those in a little bit. But for now, let's look at the top eight of the Open. And you can see here, first place, Blue-White Control, piloted by Rusi Brixa. And this deck actually did really, really well this weekend and has a huge amount of influence from Dominaria. You're going to see that once we get into the deck list. Also, you see some familiar faces here, like Red Black Aggro, a couple of those. Also, Mono Red Aggro, a couple of those. Red Black Vehicles, you see another Blue White Control made it in 7th place, and Assault Eye Constrictor in 3rd. So, the deck lists themselves, at least in this particular tournament, they do feel more like the traditional decks we've been seeing over the past few weeks, with maybe some new cards added, with the exception of Blue White Control, which did have a lot more influence from the new cards. So, let's look at that Blue White Control deck that came in first. Here's the deck list, and I know immediately you're going to notice some Dominaria cards jumping out at you. So what was in the main deck that was new from the set? Well, we had Teferi Hero of Dominaria. This was a huge card this weekend. All of these control decks were more than happy to run Teferi, which maybe wasn't a big surprise. The card just feels like it's perfect for Azorius Control. Seal Away had a huge weekend, this one being uncommon, fortunately, because a lot of people are going to want to pick these things up this week, I have no doubt. Not only did it look good in control builds, but also some other places too, which we'll see later. Blink of an Eye kind of makes sense because Into the Royal was a very good card back in its day. Blink of an Eye, awesome card, still in control. And in the sideboard, you saw Lyra Dawnbringer, Karn Sign of Urza, and another copy of Seal Away even. So there was a lot going on. And one thing I will say, this might become an expensive standard. A lot of Mythics doing well this weekend. Also worth mentioning, even though you don't see it in this particular deck list, some of these control builds were running History of Benalia, even if it's out of the sideboard. So that was another key card. We'll see that a little bit later in the video. But there were a lot of variations, actually, on a number of the deck lists they'll be looking at today, which does mean there's still a lot of room, obviously, for players to figure out the best configurations. So that's one deck list. What else is going on? Well, we have in third place Luke Browning with Sultai Constrictor. Now, this deck list, when you look at it, okay, not a whole lot new from Dominaria here. As a matter of fact, this is just sort of your normal Salt High Constrictor deck list. However, Dominaria did provide some mana smoothing with Hinterland Harbor as well as Woodland Cemetery. Now, we are going to look at another Constrictor deck from the Standard Classic in a few moments that was a little more liberal when it came to adding some Dominaria cards. This one, though, just went for the mana base. Red Black Vehicles. Okay, this one is kind of interesting because for the most part, it looks like a vehicle deck. It is Red Black, not the Mardu variety. However, one thing that will immediately jump out to you, no doubt, is the fact that we have four Karns in here. So another deck very interested in running Karn. Completely makes sense for what this type of deck is trying to do. Also, out of the sideboard, another thing that makes sense, really, Phyrexian Scriptures. A couple copies of those in here. There's a lot of great artifact creatures right now. There's a few decks running them. And this does show up in not only this sideboard, but we'll see it somewhere else in a few moments. Mono Black Control. Okay, now this one came in 25th place, so this didn't make the top 8 or anything, but I just wanted to show it to you because I thought it was really cool. 
I don't know if it will be able to sustain or if it will just kind of fade into obscurity after week one. But if people can make this work, this deck seems super sweet. And it is running a lot of cards from Dominaria. This was Philip Werner's deck. And let's take a look at it. You have all these in the main. Dread Shade, Josu Vest. You've got Cast Down, Divest, four copies of Cabal Stronghold. This is truly a mono black Dominaria based deck. Out of the sideboard, you even get a couple copies of Demon Lord Bells and Lock. Because, you know, why not? That's actually super sweet. So. I hope the deck can take off and do well. I really like it. I want to try it out myself. We'll have to see if it actually becomes truly competitive as the weeks go on. Okay, let's look at some highlights from the classic top eight right now. And this is a smaller tournament. I do want to call that out. However, this one is purely a standard tournament. So you had Green Black Constrictor coming in first, although we'll look at that deck list in just a second. Charles Porges was running this one, and it did have some more Dominaria influence there. Number two and three... Blue, white, historic, yes. This is the Dominaria deck of the weekend, and you're going to see in a few moments tons of cards from the set there. This is the one deck that probably just totally doesn't exist without Dominaria, maybe followed by the next deck, which is blue, white, control. As you can see, coming in fourth and fifth, did very well in this tournament too. And then you have a mono red aggro deck again, mono red gift, that's different, and we'll look at that one in a few moments in a Bant approach deck, rounding out the top eight. So let's look at that green-black constrictor. So here's your deck list, and you're going to notice a couple things right off the bat. There is more of a Dominaria influence than the one we saw earlier, and that comes in the form of Karn, Adventurous Impulse. You have three of each of those, and then also Woodland Cemetery showing up in the mana base like we saw in the previous one. Phyrexian Scripture showing up in this sideboard as a one-of. Okay, let's talk about this historic deck. Maybe the most exciting one in the weekend if you're a big fan of Dominaria. This was stocked with new cards. As a matter of fact, like I said a moment ago, this deck doesn't exist without the new set coming out. And you can see, just by glancing at this, there are a ton of cards here. As a matter of fact, there are nine cards in the main deck from the new set. And here they are. Teferi's here. Lyra Dawnbringer. Merfolk Trickster. Raph Capuchin Ship's Mage. History of Analia. Blink of an Eye, Seal Away, Wizard's Retort, Memorial to Genius, all in the main deck. This is stacked with everything Dominaria. In the sideboard, you even get a couple more copies of Teferi to round things out. This deck looked really good. I do think it has a lot of potential to be one of the big competitive decks going into this season. This is definitely one to watch. Again, running a lot of Mythics, though, that makes me a little nervous. Mono Red Aggro. This one came in sixth place, and I was saying on Thursday in the Market Watch, you know, Goblin Chain Whirler, you can just toss that into a Mono Red Aggro deck and kind of call it a day. Pretty much what we saw from a lot of these Mono Red Aggro decks this weekend. And this one in particular was running four copies, of course, of Goblin Chain Whirler. And out of the sideboard, though, you saw Fight with Fire, and that was very common as well. You're going to see that in another deck in just a few seconds. Mono Red Gift, seventh place deck. Here is the list, and... A few weeks back at GP Seattle, the Is It Gift deck really took the spotlight. And here's the continuing evolution of that deck, I think. And you're going to see, again, influence here from Dominaria in the form of a few cards, including Goblin Chain Whirler and Skirk Prospector in the main. And out of the sideboard, Siege Gang Commanders and Fight with Fire again. Last deck I want to show you was this Ban Approach deck that came in 8th. You'll notice by the deck list, not a lot of influence here from Dominaria, but one key card that just keeps coming up again and again, and that's Seal Away. So this card looked amazing this weekend. And I have to wonder, though, will the Approach deck surge back in coming weeks, or will those control players decide to just go with what appears right now, anyway, to be the more powerful blue-white control builds? I guess we'll see how that unfolds in the coming weeks. I could see room for both of those decks in the meta, though. I think both have a lot of potential. I hope this gives you some idea, maybe what deck you might want to think about playing this standard season, or perhaps what cards are going to be heating up, actually already heating up. As a matter of fact, later in the week, we will be doing a special edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch to look at Dominaria singles once everything kind of evens out from the weekend. And we'll actually see where the pricing is starting to land with some of these cards as finally we are seeing some competitive play. With that being said, hey, thanks again for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day.
Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.